Hello everyone. We are about to start the for a final session for the March event. After the interesting sessions for the last two days, we are ending the session with a very interesting session called on banking, banking in the metaverse from Kolkata chapter by Arpan Sarkar, who is a associate director of business development at Cognizant. So before we start the session, I would like to thank our founding sponsor, Innovation Ruth. It, Innovation Roots is a leading consulting and training service provider, helping organizations to achieve business agility and beyond. It is one of the leaders and pioneers in of niche publishing services, well known for content collaboration with global thought leaders, authors, and creators. For more details, request you to visit www.innovationroots.com. By now, you are very much aware with the do's and don'ts, so I will not take much time. Join five minutes before the start time for every session. High quality speakers use so that you have a better sound quality. Please keep your microphones muted and video disabled so that it may not may not cause disturbance to the speaker and also don't cause won't cause bandwidth issue. We will take a questions to chat box and the facilitator will help you to read out to the speakers as per the time available. And after the session, request you to fill the feedback form. We appreciate your cooperation. With this, I invite Joyta, who will be facilitating this event on behalf of Kolkata chapter. Over to you, Joyta. Thank you very much, Prashant. Okay, now we have we are going to have a session on on banking in the metaverse where we understand the evolution and modernization of banking and the imperatives of modern day digital banking. But yes, I will not be taking up much time because I, I think everyone is waiting for Arpan. So Arpan has around 15 years of experience and he currently heads the business, I think the business development, he's part of the business development team at Cognizant. So Arpan, maybe you can introduce yourself a little bit and then go ahead in the discussion. So over to you, Arpan. Thank you, Jita. Thank you, Prashant. Uh, good morning, good evening, depending on uh, which part of the globe you have joined in from. Uh, first of all, I'd like to extend my heartfelt thanks to uh, Agile Networks India and Innovation Roots for giving me this opportunity. And also my sincere thanks to all the participants who have taken time out of their busy schedules to listen in. So uh, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, banking in the metaverse. So obviously metaverse is a technology trend which has taken the world by storm right we are getting to hear about this so much and especially if you look at the timelines uh, since the latter half of 2021 all these discussions the hype around metaverse has even has picked up even further right so obviously this is the right time to pick up this topic and understand its implications of the different sectors banking uh, just being one of them uh, similarly, uh, you know, it has far-reaching consequences for all the industries and you have use cases and implementations across the board. But today we are going to talk about the banking industry in particular. Right. So uh, thanks Joita for the introduction, uh, but uh, I'll, I'll give us a brief introduction uh, about myself. So like Jaita mentioned, I have about 15 years of experience across IT, banking and consulting and throughout I have worked with banking clients. So my current role, I'm leading the business development, uh, pre-sales and solution architecture functions for banking clients. And I'm also uh, managing delivery for one of our platinum accounts, platinum banking accounts. So prior to joining Cognizant, I have had a uh, stint with uh, PricewaterhouseCoopers where, uh, where I have done uh, technology consulting for leading South Asian banks. And uh, I have been a banker myself. So prior to my stint with PwC, I have worked with Bank of Baroda, where I have been a credit underwriter for large corporates and SME lending. Yeah. So um, I, I am a great technology enthusiast. So whatever you know, new technologies I come across intrigues me a lot, and I keep reading, speaking about them. So I am a regular speaker at international conferences. I keep publishing uh, white papers on these technology trends. And I have great passion for uh, innovation as well. So I have been fortunate uh, to collaborate uh, with a few friends and colleagues of mine to design some digital banking solutions, which uh, we have been fortunate enough to showcase at the FinTech Expo, which was conducted by the government of India recently. Right. So 
besides work i am a sports and fitness enthusiast and and uh, you know i spend a lot of time on these activities and i stay in kolkata so that's a brief about me and now before we actually get into the session i wanted to spend a couple of minutes to understand your expectations and objectives from this session so if uh, you know a few of you and and let us keep this session very interactive i don't want to make it a monologue from my side so uh, if if i can understand your expectations and objectives uh, Uh, with the objectives in mind with which you have joined this session then i can align or structure the discussion accordingly and probably then your you know expectations in the sessions will the session will be made so if if some of you can speak about your expectations please any particular thoughts it can be anything i mean it need not be anything uh, specific it can be anything uh, whatever comes to your mind if you can put across then i can probably try to structure my discussion accordingly yeah hi this is uh, amar can you hear me yes yes amar yes yeah so uh, now there is a major hype uh, going on around metaverse uh, that okay. everything is going to move to metaverse and metaverse uh, is the web 4.0 so so main thing is how practical is uh, metaverse and what are the timelines we are looking at because uh, since uh, mr mixed reality is a high computation platform so everybody or all devices cannot uh, get into metaverse you need high end devices so so right. i just want to get industry viewpoint from you that how real is metaverse and how soon is it gonna come to like common people or maybe at least the it people to be really using metaverse not the hype one hype one will be for conferences and for events and all that that's fine that's big money flowing in so that's fine general perspective i want and yeah also from a banking perspective yeah since banking is uh, already we have a mobile app we have a uh, web uh, internet banking both uh, ways of banking and branches and uh, fintech is already running based on apps so what is the value addition that metaverse will add on to the whole equation very good question samar definitely uh, in the course of this discussion we will address both of these issues that you have raised thank you and uh, surabhi has also you know brought up a few pointers definitely all interesting points and in fact uh, you talked about hsbc i'm going to talk about the hsbc example also i have it in my presentation so yeah thanks for bringing those up i'll address those okay so uh, yeah so i i kind of understand uh, the the uh, you know expectations that you have from this session so overall you want to understand about metaverse because there's a information there's an information overload in the internet so you want to not get confused by that and you want to understand a simplistic view of uh, the metaverse what its implications are what it means from the banking industry and uh, from an implementation standpoint how practical or real it is or how soon we can you know think of uh, getting into the metaverse these are some of the broad topics that came up definitely i'm going to address all of these in my conversation and uh, so with that i'll go to the agenda so this is what i have planned and i think most of uh, the queries or the expectations that you have brought up Uh, will get addressed through this so the way we're going to structure this is that the first half we are going to talk about the metaverse in general so a brief overview of what it is why we are talking about it now is this the right time to talk about it what are the technology drivers behind it what are some of the use cases and implementations across the industries and we are not going to talk about only things we which are futuristic we are talk, going to talk about real examples which are there in the industry today so that you know to answer amar's questions we can understand you know how real it is and then we will segue into the uh, impact of metaverse on banking uh, so we will see how the banking industry has evolved over the past few decades again namar was talking about internet banking etc so we will see uh, how uh, the banking industry has evolved over the past few decades and how metaverse really fits into the bigger scheme of things and then we are going to talk about how metaverse can reshape banking what are some of the current implementations and what are the challenges going forward Uh, that uh, you know we have to find a work way uh, work around uh, in order to be uh, in order to make it implementable so that's the uh, agenda uh, the overall agenda 
and uh, you know without further ado i will get into the discussion of these topics and please feel free to stop me whenever you have questions or else we have this formal q and a session towards the last 5 10 minutes that will anyways be there okay so now uh, when we come to the introduction of metaverse if you google about metaverse metaverse you will find you know thousands of definitions but it's very confusing if you if you read about so many definitions if you try to you know, understand metaverse from that perspective it becomes very confusing so i'll try to make it very simple for you so meta is actually a greek word which is beyond so metaverse is uh, is actually implying something which is beyond this universe or in other words it's a digital world which is parallel to our physical world right now here i will uh, i would like to bring the reference of something called digital twin another buzzword you know which is which is making rounds these days so some of you might have heard about digital twin so what is a digital twin digital twin is basically a digital replica of an actual physical object what we typically do is that we pass on the data from the real physical objects to our the digital twins and see how it responds based on their data accordingly we take corrective actions and put it back on the real uh, physical device so that we can save a lot of cost in the whole process that is a very simplistic definition of digital twin i'll give you a real example and and i will keep referring to real example so that it doesn't look you know uh, uh, all in the air right because this is a very nascent topic so there is a possibility that all of we, all of this will uh, appear to be very imaginary very uh, very much in the air so i will keep referring back to real examples so all of you might have heard about chevron the energy giant right so what chevron is doing these days is that it is implementing a digital twin of the actual equipment that it is using in its refineries and oil fields and then they are passing on the real data which they accumulate in the sensors of the real devices to the digital twin and see how the digital twin is actually behaving subject to those conditions when they are subjected to those conditions what this means is that they can maintain they can do proactive maintenance of the actual uh, equipment based on the data they collect from the digital twin this has resulted in millions of dollars of savings uh, of maintenance cost for chevron so that is a digital twin right now when we talk about metaverse you can think of metaverse as a digital twin of the real world so it is a parallel to the digital world it's a parallel to the physical world so and and how is it different from the real world then if if it is just a parallel of the real world then how is it different the difference is that it gives you a very immersive experience although you are not in the real world so if you think of the internet that in the form in the shape and the form that it is today what happens is that you access the internet through your uh, smart phones or your laptop and these are flat screens where you get a 2d experience and at best you get the sights and the sounds of it right you get to hear some sounds you get to see certain things but you cannot actually experience or touch and feel that or maybe you cannot interact with the other characters in that internet in the real fashion right this is exactly what metaverse is going to do right it will bring you a 3d internet space where you will get a multi sensory stimuli right so apart from the auditory and the visual senses which you anyways get in the uh, 2d internet you will also get a touch and feel aspect of it you can interact and then you will create digital avatars there is something which is called digital avatars so everybody who gets into this metaverse will actually have a digital avatar of his or her own and through this you will be interacting with the avatars of the other people so you will have a real interaction experience and that is what is so unique about uh, the metaverse now i kind of like the definition which mark zuckerberg has given he calls this metaverse an embodied internet i feel this is more this is one of the most appropriate definitions that i have come across because this is this, this lets this is something which you can dive into or maybe this is something which can overlap with your physical reality there are certain things in the digital world which you can actually bring to your physical reality so that is why the embodied internet definition is very appropriate and relevant here now the next question that comes is that what do you really do there the answer is pretty much everything whatever you do in the real world right you learn you work you play you go for shopping you uh, invest in certain things right your asset your real estate assets or uh, be it your uh, you know different asset classes like your equity stocks etc all of these things is possible to be done in the metaverse and not only is it possible certain some of these things have already been implemented which i will keep referring to as we go through the course of this discussion and then we'll see how real things have become 
so you know 10 years back we were probably just thinking of these concepts right but today uh, we are not uh, any but today we are no more you know talking just talking about the concepts they are there for real so uh, if you are if you have not already read about the example of decentraland i would request you to read about decentraland so this is a metaverse platform and one of the most popular uh, you know metaverse platforms so what uh, is possible to be done in this platform is that you can buy and sell digital real assets so just like you invest in a piece of land in the physical world you can actually uh, invest in digital real assets through this platform and you use the native currency of that platform which is called mana for that right not only that there is a crypto asset library which you can you know uh, borrow from there is a decentralized university uh, where you can take courses from so pretty much all these things that you can do in the real world you can do and decentralized is just one example there are many such platforms uh, you talk about the you know the somnium you talk about the sandbox there are other platforms where you can do similar things so is it a new concept perhaps not surprisingly it is not a new concept neil stephenson had introduced this concept way back in 1992 in his uh, sci-fi uh, novel which was called snow crash the only thing uh, which uh, you know which has which is new from then is that it was a sci-fi concept that and now it is being implemented in real so it basically you know triggered the thought process of the silicon valley wizards and if you talk about things like augmented reality virtual reality which we will talk about anyways later uh, in more detail if you talk about this concept also these concepts have been there from much earlier so we ourselves have experienced this you must have heard about the pokemon go application right so those pokemons that we used to run after and catch hold of right those were not real pokemons it was a virtual reality that we were talking about so all of these are metaverse kinds of ex ex uh, experiences but the only difference is that with every passing day these experiences are evolving they are getting better and getting more real right so that in a nutshell is an overview of the metaverse and what is uh, important is that when we are talking about the size of this uh, the market size of this uh, metaverse the numbers are staggering and uh, the number that you see on the slide is one of the most conservative estimates by uh, given by bloomberg so it is uh, it is saying that by 2024 which is just 2 years from now this uh, market can reach a staggering 800 billion dollars out of which 50% will of course come from the online game gamers and the game uh, gaming hardware because that is where it got triggered from that still will continue to be uh, uh, that will still continue to contribute a lion's share to it but the rest 50% will come from live entertainment and social media activities right so that is the kind of numbers we are talking about there is a kind of business opportunities uh, that we are talking about now so with now that we have talked about the overview of the metaverse and now that we know that it is not a new concept obviously the next question uh, that comes up is that why is it then we are talking about metaverse now if it has been there for the last 3 decades why why is it that we are talking about now and we haven't talked about it earlier so let us see what are the most important things why we are discussing about about metaverse now so i i'll refer to a, a person's name here there was a guy called ivan sutherland so this person had uh, come up with a virtual reality device way back in 1968 so you can imagine none of us were even born then but we had a virtual reality device then but that virtual reality device was very gross and crude it was not a sophisticated device and you know it was so heavy that nobody could even think of putting it around his or her head uh, mounting onto a headset it was very uncomfortable they had to you know hang it from a wall or from a ceiling and then use it so that is the reason the you know they, they you know they made a fun of it and they called it sword of democles as if it was dangling right so from those days we have come up, come across a long way and now we have really advanced gadgets in the form of the oculus the sony playstations the htc vibes of the world and these devices have actually redefined the user experience and one of the reasons that we are talking about metaverse now is because this because of the redefined user experience because of this cool gadgets that's one second thing is that uh, again referring back to uh, amar's point right that how real can it get the fact that we are talking about it now is is actually an indication of the fact that it has proliferated into real world use cases all this while we were using it only for fun we were just doing gaming and all but now we are meaning business out of it we are talking about serious stuff like banking healthcare manufacturing etc and its serious implications on these you know, use cases and that is the reason 
you know, it has become a little more real and it has become a little more, you know, uh, acceptable to people. And that is why it is, its popularity is also increasing. That's the second thing. Third thing, the cheap access to data and computing power. And we can't, you know, overemphasize the importance of data in this aspect, the computing power in this aspect. Again, Amar was talking about this. So because of the huge amounts of computing power that is available at our disposal today, we uh, we can, you know, build AI ML models easily. And that will obviously create a layer over the user experience that we used to have, let's say, even 10 years back. Right. That is also one of the reasons why uh, Metaverse is... Uh, you know, becoming more mainstream these days. The fourth and the fifth points are probably the most important points. The fourth point is around pandemic. The pandemic, you know, has been an accelerator for metaverse. So it has obviously restricted our movements and it has pushed us to the confines of the four walls of our home. Now, obviously, this has provoked our desire to fulfill the real world experiences which we used to have in the real world, but we are not being able to have it now that has pushed us to the virtual world and we tend to be inclined more towards the metaverse now. That's the, that's also an important reason. And last but not the least, the large corporations are investing and betting on it. To talk about the big corporations, the Facebooks and the Microsofts of the world, they are betting on it and investing on it big time. And you know that when these companies are sneezing, we have to catch the cold. That is the reason uh, we, we, uh, we see the metaverse term and the hyper of metaverse picking up so much. You, you heard that in uh, October 2021, Metaverse, uh, Facebook actually rebranded uh, re itself into Meta. So they are publicly calling themselves a Metaverse first company uh, and not a social media first company now. If you take the example of Microsoft, they have uh, acquired a company called Activision Blizzard. It's a gaming company and they have bought it for a whopping $68.7 billion. So that company, um, you know, it, it is basically the largest acquisition in the history of Meta, uh, in the history of Microsoft. So you can understand that if these tech giants are investing so much of money into uh, Metaverse, then there must be something, uh, you know, some business opportunity in this. And that has also made Metaverse very real. So these are some of the reasons that I could think of uh, for which we are talking about Metaverse now. And which and we were not talking about it some time back, right? So that's also very important to understand. Now moving on, uh, let's think. Uh, let's discuss about the technology drivers behind metaverse. Now metaverse is actually an ecosystem solution. So it is brought together by the combination of a few technologies and many technologies. In fact, it's not only a few technologies, many technologies. But we'll talk about two three technologies which are uh, you know the most prominent out of this. And the most prominent out of this would be the extended reality suit, blockchain and artificial intelligence. Now, when we talk about the XR or the extended reality suit, basically we are talking about many you know, solutions out of which the most important ones are augmented reality or AR, virtual reality or VR and mixed reality or MR. Now, what are these? Virtual reality is basically something, a technology which will give you a complete immersive experience into a world which is not even, you know, which which you can't uh, experience in your uh, real physical existence. Let's say uh, you, you desire to walk on the moon or let's say you wish to uh, take a dive deep down under the sea. There are virtual reality applications these days through which you can get that experience. That is VR. And how is that different from AR? AR is something which which is not completely a virtual or immersive experience, but it actually augments your actual reality. So it, it creates, a, it, it actually superposes, uh, superimposes your digital assets on top of your real assets or real world. I'll give you an example. You must have heard about this Swedish furniture manufacturer called IKEA, right? It's a very popular furniture manufacturer. So today, if you want to uh, buy a man, uh, furniture from IKEA, you have a smartphone augmented reality application through which you can uh, scan one corner of your room. You can put an actual IKEA furniture over there and see how it actually looks like. And if it you know, suits your choice, then only you go and invest in it. So imagine how cool things have become and, and how, uh, how good the user experience must be. And there, the, the IKEA is not the only example. There are so many of these. Take the example of Dulux. Dulux today allows you to, uh, you know, through augmented reality applications, it allows you to apply paints on your walls before you decide on a particular paint. 
imagine uh, uh, think of the rolex watches that's a very expensive watch that you are investing in before investing in that watch they actually allow you to try those watches on your wrists and see how it looks like lens cut another example uh, you know close to home they are also doing the same thing you can wear those glasses in the augmented reality world and see how the pair of glasses are looking on your face and then you can take a decision on this so all of these are augmented reality applications right? and what is mixed reality mixed reality is something in between so it is a notch above the augmented reality and it is one level below the virtual reality so what we typically do is that we take the uh, virtual objects place them on our uh, on our physical uh, real world similar to augmented reality but then we can interact with them that is the additional layer we put in case of mixed reality now a very cool example of this is ford ford the aut automobile manufacturer all of you have heard about ford right what ford is doing these days it is, is that it is letting you use the uh, microsoft hololens device which is a mixed reality device so you use this headset you put that headset on and through that you can actually scan the prototype of a ford model and see whether some engineering maneuvers that you are making actually is making sense on that prototype if it is not then you change that prototype earlier what used to happen is that if you had to try these things out you had to try it on a real prototype if it doesn't if it didn't work out then you had to scrap it completely it meant a loss for you right now what is happening is that with the help of this microsoft hololens and the mixed reality applications that they have created you can actually try it on the real prototype without wasting any money and then actually take a, and, and then accordingly take a decision on this so that is the extended reality suit that we are talking about ar vr mr now the next question that comes is that in that case is metaverse the same as ar vr mr the answer is no because metaverse like i mentioned is an ecosystem solution and AR, VR, MR is only part of that solution. So, meta, if you has, if you have to define metaverse, it is AR, VR, MR plus a lot of other things, right? So that is about the XR suit. Next is blockchain. Blockchain we all know is a distributed ledger, so it can record transactions in an immutable fashion. So, it, and its transactions need not be financial transactions. We, we these days we are talking about a lot of other things. It can be a document storage uh, application also. where we are storing documents and the hashes of those documents are actually stored in that blockchain so the moment somebody tries to tamper with that document because of that cryptographic hashing it it immediately get published to all the users because it's a distributed ledger right all of the user is not a centralized party that is using this all of the users who are actually accessing that application are party to this party to this network so the moment you try to tamper with it immediately you get caught and that is why we call blockchain immutable and this is a very important feature because of which blockchain founds the founding block or founding pillar one of the founding pillars of the metaverse now when it comes to blockchain almost synonymously we talk about cryptocurrencies and non fungible tokens nfts now what are these cryptocurrencies you have heard about bitcoin which is one of the first applications of blockchain similar to blockchain uh, similar to bitcoin we have ethereum we have cardano we have solana we have we have so many we have hundreds of uh, cryptocurrencies listed these days right and why these cryptocurrencies are important because in your uh, metaverse you are trying to replicate the actual world so in the actual world since you are transacting with real money you need something to transact with in the virtual world also and your cryptocurrencies are a parallel to your fiat currency that is why cryptocurrencies are integral to your uh, metaverse similarly non fungible tokens right things that you buy and sell the i was talking about uh, buying and selling digital real assets right in in uh, decentraland that is nothing but a non fungible token and why is it called a non fungible token so for that you have to understand what fungible means in economics we call something fungible when it can be exchanged for something with a similar good let's say you we can take the example of uh, fiat currency let's say we have a 100 rupee note you can exchange it for 520 rupee notes and it will give you the same value so it's not non fungible it's very much fungible but let's say we pick up a piece of art let's say i i am a good painter i have a, i have uh, you know created a painting and put it on the blockchain so that nobody can tamper with it and i want to you know make monetize it and create money out of it so i have created a token this is definitely non fungible because there can be only one original copy of it right and that is why the cryptocurrencies and the non fungible tokens that you build on the blockchain are integral parts of your metaverse right so that is that is one of the important things now web 
that is also another term which we keep hearing about. What is Web 3.0? We've heard about Web 1.0, Web 2.0, and now we are talking about Web 3.0. So Web 1.0 is the normal worldwide web that we all used to keep uh, you know, uh, accessing. Web 2.0 is the social media or the interactive internet. So here we are not only uh, accessing information, we are also interacting with people. And Web 3.0, is a refined version of Web 1.2 and 1.0, Web 2.0 combined because some smart people one day figured out that okay, we there is a community of users who are exchanging information over a platform. They are interacting with one another, but in the process, the Googles and the Facebooks of the world are actually getting getting access to the data of those users. Why do we need to do that? If we are the users who are interacting with one another, we are the users who are in exchanging information then we can pretty much uh, you know share the information amongst ourselves without a central intermediary so that is when they thought of creating a decentralized internet which we call as web 3.0 and this web 3.0 is the founding you know this is one of the founding pillars of blockchain uh, sorry the founding pillars of metaverse so you can understand how this web 3.0 your cryptos your non fungible tokens all of this linked together create a platform which is one of the you know triggers of the driving forces behind metaverse now then similar question arises that if web 3.0 is the is really the technology on which metaverse is developed then are these two things the same again the question answer is no because of the same explanation that i give with your extended reality suit that this is an ecosystem solution you know the blockchain or web web 3.0 cannot alone drive metaverse it has to be combined with your artificial intelligence it has to be combined with your extended reality and these all of these solutions together will create you know the experience of that metaverse the immersive experience that metaverse gives to its gives to its users and then last but not the least artificial intelligence so technically you can run a metaverse without artificial intelligence also you don't need it if if you have a decentralized internet if you have a virtual reality application you can run metaverse but practically it is not possible because the moment you get into metaverse you want to improve, get a superior user experience. And if you have to do that, then your hum human computer interface has to be that much more accurate and precise. And this you can do only when you are using the artificial intelligence and machine learning models. Let's say you create a digital avatar of yourself. Now you would like ideally the digital avatar to look very much like yourself, right? Or talk very much like you. How can you do that? Only when you, your artificial intelligence model can scan your 2D images, can scan your voice, and can create a replica of that in the metaverse, then only you can create probably a digital avatar which is very close to your real being. Right? So artificial intelligence, technically, although it is possible to run metaverse without artificial intelligence, practically speaking, we it's not possible and we should not be thinking about that also. So those are you know the major tech drivers that I could think of which are running the metaverse these days. Right? Now that we have understood uh, an overview of the metaverse and the tech drivers behind metaverse, let us see some of the real use cases and implementations of metaverse across the different industries. I'll start with gaming, right? Gaming because simply because of the reason that all of this concept and hype around metaverse actually got triggered from online gaming. There's a concept called MMORPG. Right? If, you, if you Google a bit about it, you will see that it's called massively multiplayer online remote playing game. And this is this is a you know bucket term which actually combines many games uh, which are available. So a lot of these VR games like Roblox, Fortnite, which is created by the Epic uh, Games, then you know Minecraft, then even Facebook has its own game, right? Meta Horizon Worlds. All of these games are actually MMORPG, and it gives you this gaming experience in the metaverse. Out of this, I will specifically want to talk about Roblox because Roblox is very is slightly different from the others. So Roblox is not one particular game. It's a platform which gives you access to a number of these VR games, metaverse games, and it at the same time, it not only lets your users play games, it also lets the users of the players create games. So the same platform gives you the ability to play games and create games together in parallel. And uh, basically, how do you do this? You can access the games for free, but during the course of playing those games, you can actually buy some uh, assets in, in, in the metaverse for some money with the native currency within this platform and it is called I'm forgetting it, uh, something or, or like RUB or ROB you call the native currency of Roblox. So this money that they collect out of those uh, transactions, these can actually be set apart or set aside 
to be shared with the developers who are creating the new games and that is the monetizing model for the developers who are building games in roblox so you can think of the imaginative ways of the innovative ways uh, of of you know business models or monetizing models that these you know platforms are coming up with so that is about gaming the next big use case is collaboration we all have heard about microsoft teams it's a collaboration platform wherein uh, you know the the uh, it's used in the corporate scenario it used in the even in the personal world where we actually connect with our colleagues and your friends and we interact right they are now building microsoft is now building something called mesh which is a an extended version of microsoft teams so it, this is basically basically the 3d kind of platform for microsoft teams where you can create avatars for yourselves and you can uh, collaborate in a virtual workspace so um, this is and why it is very important is that it gives you the convenience of accessing this platform from any device it, irrespective of the devices uh, that your different players or different uh, you know participants are accessing uh, this platform from they can actually get that virtual collaboration experience and enjoy that immersive 3d kind of reality uh, and and uh, can touch and feel and can experience the interaction with their with the digital avatars of their counterparts right so that is uh, that that is what is happening in the collaboration space similarly snapchat you all have heard about snapchat snapchat has come up with something called connected lenses which is also very similar next comes the retail and the consumer goods space we have talked about nike we have talked about rolex lens cut so many of these and and you can you can think about others also the ralph lawrence uh, the the uh, christian diors the gucci's of the world right they are also allow you to try apparels on before you actually buy one right so retail and consumer goods world is also being taken storm by the metaverse and importantly these are not things which we are you know thinking of in the future these are things which are already there for real you can go to an ar app and actually you can try these things out before buying something so that is about the real and the consumer goods the next thing the very important thing public services which was unimaginable and unheard of a few days back right you have, uh, you can you can google a bit and uh, read about seoul the capital of south korea they ha they have opened up their municipal administration on metaverse right this is the this is the part of their 10 year plan digital vision right so uh, the global cultural exchanges the tourism the you know addressing of the civic uh, civic issues all of this is, can be done through this platform let's say the seoul lantern festival it's it's a very famous uh, korean festival i am st i am sitting today miles away from south korea obviously i cannot imagine of going there and experiencing this festival but today with this metaverse experience because their municipal administration has been opened up on metaverse i can think of going and enjoying this festival and in the process it it opens up a new revenue stream for the south uh, korean government as well right so imagine the possibilities barbados it's an east caribbean uh, uh, city that you must have, country that you have, must have heard of right they have opened up a digital embassy and they are talking about issuing e visas uh, through this uh, through this uh, you know metaverse embassy so imagine the possibilities in the entertainment world be it film screening the music concerts the sports weddings the art exhibitions everything is today possible in in in, in metaverse uh, those who are, who are interested about western music must have heard the name of travis scott right the american rapper this guy a, a few days a few days back he organized a concert in partnership with fortnite we were talking about fortnite in, under the gaming section right the, he uh, you know uh, organized a con concert in association with the fortnite and that concert actually attracted 27 million views so imagine the kind of popularity these things are gaining right come to the healthcare space medical training precision surgeries improved teleconsultations everything today is possible and is happening uh, through metaverse so those are some of the you know use cases and implementations across the different non banking industries i wanted to keep the banking industry separate because this will now get into the next section that we will talk about banking in detail so here i will take a you know small pause and you know i i know i have shared a lot of information which may be a little difficult to digest with this small you know, span of time but i'll take a quick pause and try to understand if you have any questions at this stage regarding the general concept of metaverse before we delve deep into the banking space so any questions please no questions at this stage right okay okay then then probably i'll move ahead uh, i'll talk about the implications of metaverse in the uh, in the banking space yeah. so 
before we go to the uh, impact or or you know the use cases or the implications of uh, you know metaverse uh, in banking let us try to understand the evolution of banking in the last two three decades right if we closely follow this space and if we try to put a, uh, try to put a very simplistic timeline view of this right we saw the traditional banking giving way to internet banking where in a few select select internet based uh, services were given and we called that internet banking or online banking and this started taking shape sometime towards the mid or late 1990s so we saw the wells fargo's uh, of the world in, uh, in in the in in the uh, in usa which uh, started offering uh, these services towards 1995 96 at the same time uh, probably icic bank in india were extending extending such services right so we saw the evolution of internet and online banking towards the mid and the late 1990s but then this was not sufficient to go into a completely branchless model simply because of the reason that 100% of the services were not still available still not available on the internet there were still a lot of the services which were available only on offline right and then the next revolution happened when sometime towards 2010 a few years i would say in between 2005 and 2010 a lot of these banks you know started extending 100% of their services over internet and they called this virtual banking which means that you don't need a branch at all right you you are getting completely into virtual or branchless banking model and classic examples of these are the capital ones and the discovers and the ali banks of the world right you you all have heard about this banking giants discover for example they are operating in in a huge geography like usa with with, with a completely branchless model, less model similarly for ali bank it's a it's a retail online bank so these things were you know unthinkable you know two three days decades back but now these things are happening but one you know constraint or one shortcoming of this virtual banking model was that it was detaching the consumers from the reality so people like probably my parents my grandparents probably people from our generation as well you know some people want to have the real touch and feel and the real interaction you know with the bankers but that was not possible in virtual banking right and that is where probably metaverse fits into this ecosystem that is where metaverse fits into the the broader scheme of things when we combine virtual banking with the next gen products and services and that immersive customer experience which i was talking about that is what creates the metaverse banking and and the 2020s right just like we saw 90s being the era of online banking the 2010s or the 2000s being the era of virtual banking 2020s is definitely going to be the era of metaverse banking so let's now see how metaverse bank influence banking i believe if we have to look at the two broad areas one would definitely be the redefinition of the customer and the employee experience and engagement the second thing would be Uh, the evolution of the product and the services catalog definitely this is going to metaverse is going to open up a whole new world of product and services innovation right let's see now now i will spend some time to get into the details of these two categories first let us think about how metaverse can redefine the customer and employee experience firstly think of a world where your traditional or you know internet banking services that you are enjoying today think of a world where these services are lifted and shifted into another world which is a 3d world a 3d environment which has a multi sensory effect so you get to do all these transactions in that world with the effect of touch and feel and that exactly solves the problem of virtual banking and that that is that is something which is happening for real in a lot of banks have already started uh, you know when i come to the use cases later you will see that a uh, lot of these banks bnp pariva for example they have created a virtual reality application uh, wherein uh, customers being uh, are being able to open uh, you know accounts and do a lot of other banking transactions through uh, this real life experience right so that is one so so facilitating the transactions in a 3d kind of environment and mimicking the real life experience number one number two very innovative ways of employee and customer engagement now during the pa pandemic you know when we are talking to our clients i'm talking about cognizant or my my experience with cognizant when we are talking about our with our clients we are seeing a major issue that the management or the leadership of all these clients is facing is that they are getting disconnected with their employees and you know we we are hearing of you know serious consequences of this people are actually you know taking up multiple employments then uh, you know th there are things uh, th there are you know instances of the management getting so much you know detached uh, from the from their employees that it is leading to 
the great resignation saga that we are hearing about now so metaverse uh, we feel has you know the potential to solve this problem i'll give you an example there is one korean bank which has recently done this so when this uh, during the during the pandemic phase uh, during the pandemic phase and even before that right when this uh, 2020 tokyo olympics was going on they uh, korea was participating in the baseball event so they had a national team uh, representing the country in the baseball event what this korean bank did is that they you know bought a piece of land in the metaverse and they created a platform where they invited all their employees and customers who are baseball fans to cheer together for their national team imagine the kind of wow experience that this uh, employees or customers would have you know and and uh, it actually saw more than 20000 participants on that platform so these are you know very innovative ways of customers and employees engaging together and uh, solving some of that you know social distancing issues that we that we are experiencing in this times of pandemic next virtual reality enabled employee training why this is important is because if you have to extend trainings to your employees on the job there there is a problem of putting your reputation at stake let's say you put an employee uh, into on the job training and that employee goes up that uh, puts your reputation at stake right but then with the help of vr enabled uh, training what you can do is that you can simulate your real life customer experience situations and you can subject your employees to uh, to trainings under those scenarios and they can actually um, understand the the emotions of the customers and adjust their behavior accordingly so they get get the training a very uh, you know training which is very real but at the same time you don't put your reputation at risk and bank of america has exactly done the same thing they have trained more than 50000 of their employees through this wear enabled application so that's also one application that we are seeing in the banking space and finally outreach to an extended customer base so you know this fintechs they are you know reaching out to the tech savvy customers the generation mz that we call the gen z and the millennials combined together they are reaching out to this tech savvy people who love to experience this new technologies and if the banks the established banks today they are not catching up they are not keeping pace with the evolution in this technology they are bound to lose out on this race they are going to you know lose out on an extended customer base so that is the reason you know banks have an opportunity to extend their customer base they can reach out to you know more number of customers and can uh, generate an extend uh, an increased stream of revenue Uh, through this metaverse, metaverse platform, and obviously the way the market is go also going to be different. It's not going to be a traditional marketing initiative. Uh, you have to treat uh, these customers as your partner because it's an ecosystem solution where all of these players are coming together. It's a decentralized system where users, the participants, the clearing houses, your brokers, your bankers, everybody is coming together in a decentralized platform and working together, right? So your marketing initiative also has to change accordingly. So. so those are some of the instances and then many more of course these are not it's not limited only to these but i'm just bringing uh, a few key ones which uh, have already found real life applications or implementations in the world right so those are some of the things that we are seeing in space of redefining redefining the customer and the employee experience now moving on fostering product and services innovation we have all heard about decentralized finance right defi which we call as defi so what kind of product uh, you know services products and services innovation can decentralized financing decentralized finance on metaverse can lead to number one very important digital currency based payments now we can see a lot of this federal governments are still on a denial mode if you take the indian government you know a couple of years back they were saying they will uh, ban cryptocurrencies today in in the recent budget our honorable finance minister she has said that they are not going to ban finance uh, so sorry cryptocurrencies but they are going to treat those cryptocurrencies as investment assets not as uh, you know currencies not as payment vehicles i'm sure you know some some years down the line they are going to acknowledge this even as a legal currency right so so once these you know current this this uh, cryptocurrencies uh, they they get treated as the legal tender of currency so th th there will be digital currency based payments that will happen and they can happen through the stable coins the alt coins that we were talking about like the bitcoins or the ethereum so or they can be through the central bank uh, digital currency route which uh, even even the indian government has announced in the recent budget they're talking about launching a uh, central bank digital currency which will be their official uh, digital currency so whatever route be it whatever regulations uh, there may be around this 
eventually i think this is going to give away to the legitimization of the digital currency based payments so that's definitely going to be one of the revolutions and payment innovations secondly today we are talking about uh you know things like buying and selling virtual real assets so you can imagine if we are talking about virtual mortgage interactions but virtual mortgage trans transactions obviously products and services around uh, lending or insurance will be built and extended uh, uh, around these things already we have a platform called terra zero this terra zero it's a fintech right this terra zero fintech platform they are extending metaverse mortgages and very interestingly they have this non fungible tokens that i was talking about the as the collaterals so obviously this is a virtual mortgage transaction so you don't have a real uh, piece of land as the mortgage you have a non fungible token as the parcel of land that you are putting as your mortgage and that is your collateral against this transaction right so lending against this bank assurance products against this then virtual atms so you can think of a virtual atm uh, so so today we know right we go to an atm and withdraw cash and with that we transact in the real world tomorrow what can happen is that you can go to this digital world you can transact using your virtual atms you can withdraw your uh, you know virtual currencies or cryptocurrencies put them in a digital wallet and transact with the help of that so with all of these things essentially what we are saying is that your real and the digital worlds they are coming closer to each other they obviously when we are talking about the real life implications of metaverse they these two these two worlds the real world and the parallel digital world they have to work in continuum they have to work hand in hand in collusion right and that can only happen when we are spending real money in the digital uh, virtual world and virtual money in the real world i think applications like virtual atms are excellent examples of uh, of uh, you know enabling that then virtual property tours again an excellent example i'll i'll refer to one interesting example from lloyd banking group so anybody who has been exposed to the uk banking space would have heard about lloyd banking group it is one of the largest banking groups in the uk not only that in terms of mortgage lending it is the largest in the uk every one out of four uh, mortgage loans are disbursed by lloyd's banking group in in the uk they have come up with something called citra living interestingly during the pandemic because uh, uh, there was a you know there was a massive shift towards digital banking so a lot of their a lot of their branches were getting defunct right so then they started thinking about what to do with these branches they thought that they can rent out these branches and they can generate a stream of revenue and then they extended the, this thought and came up with a came up with a concept called citra living wherein now they are aspiring to buy around 50000 properties across the uk and rent them out which will create a parallel stream of revenue for them now imagine 50000 assets getting rented out across the uk what kind of humongous effort it will take to do the property inspections to do you know uh, to show those properties to the ones who are looking out for rent it will it will be a humongous effort metaverse platforms can easily be used to integrate virtual property tours uh, of these properties that they have invested in and facilitate this process so those are the things those are the directions in which you know houses like the lloyds banking group are also thinking of so imagine the possibilities and i am talking about only four or five such you know real life applications which have already been conceptualized there may be thousands of other applications which are in the process of evolution or in the process of innovation which we are not being able to even think of at the moment right so definitely in terms of revolutionizing customer experience and in terms of fostering product and service innovation services innovation metaverse has a very very crucial role to play and although we are not uh, you know thinking of real life implementations of all of this in let's say the next two years to come definitely in the next decade banking has to be and will be revolutionized by metaverse obviously there are you know uh, challenges which we will discuss I'll, I'll come to the next slide. Uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, first, let us talk about the cases in points or the cases in point. Uh, and and like I was mentioning, there are many uh, fintechs uh, which are going ahead with hundreds and thousands of implementations. But here, I'm not talking about only a few established players, the names of whom you all know about. Let's say JP Morgan Chase. They have recently uh, come up with uh, J. Uh, they have recently come up with. Uh, this onyx lounge you may have heard about something called onyx lounge so what what onyx lounge is uh, basically it's an umbrella concept under which they have uh, accumulated all their blockchain based services so there is something called iin or link 
so wherein they are exchanging payments uh, information across the different uh, bankers so that is happening in the uh, onyx platform then you know they have uh, launched a new currency called jpm coin which is their native cryptocurrency they are allowing transacting with jpm coin under the aegis of this uh, onyx platform right onyx launch so those kinds of very innovative things which are happening in the blockchain based digital decentralized world are being facilitated through the jp morgan chase onyx launch then kookmin bank in korea they have already opened a virtual bank virtual branch on the metaverse platform city bank they have created you know holo holographic walking stations uh, financial trading hsbc i think somebody was talking about hsbc probably um, amar or somebody amar or suravi somebody was talking about hsbc right hsbc has partnered with a platform called sandbox it is also one of the most popular uh, metaverse platforms like the decentraland so like decentraland sandbox is another uh, metaverse platform so hsbc has collaborated with this uh, sandbox platform to uh, you know to create gaming zones uh, this is similar to the korean bank example that i was talking of where wherein they have created an employee engagement experience through that uh, through, uh, through that uh, baseball uh, match experience so here uh, here also through that sandbox environment they are creating hsbc is creating a gaming zone where their uh, customers and employees can collaborate and they can interact with one another then bnp paribas i was already talking about bnp paribas which is already uh initiated banking transactions uh banking transactions like account opening and other transactions over metaverse and they are also doing it over decentraland bank of america again another example close to my heart that i was talking about they have trained around 50000 people uh with with the help of vr enabled training another classic example new york stock exchange and all of these examples are you can see from various to miss out the spy of the revenue they, that is why they are also onboarded onto the new uh, metaverse new york stock exchange they have filed a patent now uh, to create an exchange which will only be for trading of non fungible tokens so you can imagine the kinds of things are happening in this world and to answer amar's question these are real life ex examples which have already been implemented so we can definitely uh, you know think we can be bullish about the future of metaverse and we can definitely think of future innovations which can come up on this platform now when we have talked about all these things naturally everything can uh, seem to be very rosy you can think of a metaverse to be uh, the uh, solution or the elixir to all the problems that you have in this uh, have in this banking world is that so the answer is no there are definitely many challenges that you have to address before you can actually go ahead and implement metaverse and make it really successful let us see some what are some of those headwinds number one obviously cyber security glitches so i was talking about decentralized financing some time back right so people who are conversant with cryptocurrencies must be knowing that there are centralized ex exchanges and then there are decentralized exchanges so decentralized exchanges are you know kind of peer to peer marketplaces where you invest in these currencies and they not only give you uh, give you an opportunity to make money out of that active investment they also give you an opportunity to uh, gain something out of that passively for example this is like a uh, savings bank account where you park money and earn interest so this decentralized cryptocurrency exchanges they let you invest in these cryptocurrencies and they give you give you interest on these cryptocurrencies that you are holding on in their wallet which is like a savings bank so importantly a lot of people who have actually tried to make money out of this passive investment have lost everything because these wallets where the, you have stored your cryptocurrencies have got hacked so there is a long way before you can actually solve this cyber security glitches and make it more real and more 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 you know user friendly and so that people and the users and the uh, investors do not have apprehension in their mind so that's one second lack of regulations there at this moment it is not regulated that's also a concern a lot of the conservative investors are not coming forward because there is no regulation i was talking about what the indian government has done uh, you know in the recent budget that they have declared a central bank digital currency they have uh, kind of acknowledged uh, cryptocurrencies as uh, as as a as a vehicle of investment so the more such initiatives are taken by the federal governments around the world more this will give legitimacy to your blockchain and uh, decentralized network based transactions more it will legitimize metaverse and more it will legitimize in the process uh, banking on the metaverse so lack of regulations as as on date is definitely a problem uh, but uh, 
definitely um, we we need to move forward on this in order to make the transactions more uh, more uh, trustworthy and more credible to our investors and the customers then extreme volatility of the assets today you can invest in a non fungible token and tomorrow you can see whole half of your uh, you know, investment getting depleted so so people who have a conservative mindset are not take, not definitely going to invest in this kinds of things so there has to be you know a liquidity and a volatility rationalization and moderation before these things become more popular then health concerns right those vr you know those vr headsets that we are talking about they can look very cool they can look very you know sophisticated but if you are uh, putting them on uh, for an extended hours they can create issues for your neck for your spine for your eyes exactly uh, so 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 people who are concerned about the, who are health conscious people who are you know fitness freaks they will you know think uh, twice before getting uh, involved in such platforms so that's also a concern next need for interoperability operability this is a huge huge problem because like i mentioned this is a ecosystem solution and in order to make an ecosystem solution workable you have to bring all these private parties together who will share and exchange data and today you know how uh, how people are actually competing for data which is the new oil so exchanging data and collaborating uh, with data is something which is very far fetched fetched as of today so people have to you know get on to a more liberal and a flexible mindset they need to be uh, they need to be uh, willing to exchange data then it and then only interoperability would be possible and then only probably metaverse will uh, be possible at scale then lack of immediate roi right return on investment today you have you are investing in a banking vr banking solution which will probably invest uh, give you the returns 8 years 10 years down the line not all banks or not all established players will will be willing to take that risk right that's also a problem all of us in in the business world are looking for immediate roi short term roi so if you are if somebody is looking for short term roi from this probably then then they have to miss the bus right so all of these things be the security and regulation guidelines be the uh, liquidity and volatility issues be the health concerns be the interoperability issues all of these things have to be solved before we can think of implementing and using metaverse at scale not only for the banking industry but for all the industries right so with that pinch of salt i will conclude my discussion uh, and i will open up the forum for questions and answers so please feel free to shoot any questions that you may have i will try to answer thank you everyone thank you arpan i think uh, mr goel has a question which is he is asking why rbi does not allow branchless banking we don't have much time so i have to go through quickly yeah right. why does so uh, right yes. right right like like i was saying uh, like i was saying that there is no particular reason for rbi not allowing virtual uh, branchless banking right so this is a conservative mindset of the federal governments and not only rbi if you look at many federal governments around the world they are not allowing branchless banking they are not allowing virtual uh, banking transactions they are not allowing cryptocurrencies so the reason is that you still do not have a regulator they still do not have you know a bill uh, they do not have a set of regulations through which they can bind the investors that or bind the participants in this transaction that is why they have not come up. the moment they are able to come up with a set of regulations which they will be confident about which they will be you know confident about uh, protecting the investors interests with they will immediately launch it you you saw that the central bank digital currency has been launched by the indian government but still they are you know talking about the uh, the crypto bill we have been hearing about the crypto bill from the last one one and a half years but it is still it has not seen the light of the day similarly for branchless banking also it's because of the conservative mindset and also keeping in mind the interests of the investors that this has not yet been implemented but uh, i'm sure that going forward when all of these established players are joining the bandwagon rbi or the indian government can also not afford to miss the bus i hope that answers your question yes then uh, i think uh, there is another question he says are fintechs using metaverse banking yes i think they are okay yes absolutely that's what i was saying that the examples that i have taken are from the established banking world how is india placed at this moment to implement metaverse practically how are we seeing this in the next two years right right so like i mentioned uh, that uh, i i will again refer back to the headwinds that i talked about 
so while metaverse is coming up in a large way while we are seeing the implementations of metaverse across the world then there are you know headwinds or challenges which are which need to be resolved before we can see this and honestly if you ask me two years down the line i don't see this happening at scale at least in india some of the other governments for example i talk i talked about the korean government where they have implemented the uh, seol municipal administration through metaverse some of these governments which are you know thinking a little in a, in a slightly advanced manner for them it can still happen but two years down the line in india i don't see this happening at least in scale pocs can happen implementations here and there can happen but honestly large scale implementations i don't think it will happen but definitely in the next decade you can expect this to happen okay thank you i don't think we have any more questions so thank you very much for a very good session arpan we look forward to having many more sessions like this as we go along and evolve